Hey guys, it's Larissa. I'm going to try to read 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and give you some thoughts. Don't take my word for anything I say. Make sure you're praying, reading the Bible yourself, getting discernment, and doing your own studies. Okay. Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are you not my work in the Lord? If I am not an apostle to others, yet doubtless I am to you, for you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. My defense to those who examine me in, is this. Do we have no right to eat and drink? Do we have no right to take along a believing wife, as do, the, uh, as do also the other apostles, the brothers of the Lord and Cephas? Or, or is it only Barnabas and I who have no right to refrain from working? Whoever goes to war at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard and does not eat of its fruit? Or who tends a flock and does not drink of the milk of the flock? Paul is enforcing the principle of you take care of the messenger of God. Whoever is, like whenever Jesus sent them out two by two, he said, take no food, take no extra clothes, take no extra sandals, and don't take a money bag with you. In other words, let God provide for you where you're going and the people will be moved to provide for you. Paul's saying, who's saying that I'm not an apostle? I am an apostle. Jesus himself declared that I'm an apostle. And I don't take anything from y'all, but I've, just because I don't take anything from you does not make me not an apostle. He says, all the apostles have the right to have all these things and don't I also whoever goes to war just because he wants to go to war whoever plants a vineyard and doesn't eat of the fruit like my mom has a garden it's like her planting her garden and then not ever eating anything from it okay do I say these things as mere men as a mere man, or does not the law say the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, in Deuteronomy 25, You shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. Is it oxen God is concerned about? Or does he say it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he who plows should plow in hope, and he who threshes in hope should be partaker of his hope. If we have sown spiritual things for you, is it a great thing if we reap your material things? If others are partakers of this great right over you, are we not even more? If you're giving others things for not even teaching you spiritual things, how much more do we have the right to have things from you, material things, because we're your spiritual parents. They're the ones that have taught them all these things and they're not even getting anything out of it. It sounds kind of sounds like a letter to ask for funds almost. When you know when you get a letter from somebody or your church gets a letter from somebody and is asking for donations and stuff. Anyways, nevertheless, we have not used this right, but endure all things, lest we hinder the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that those who minister the holy things eat of the things of the temple? And those who serve at the altar partake of the offering of the altar? Even so, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should live from the gospel. But I have used none of these things, nor have I written these things, that it should be done so for me. For it would be better for me to die than that anyone should make, me, or make my boasting void. For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yes, woe to me if I do not preach the gospel, for it is, for if I do this willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What is my reward then? That when I preach the gospel, I may present the gospel of Christ without charge that I may not abuse my authority in the gospel. So Paul's saying that both oh, society um, the Mosaic Law and the Lord himself all say that you're supposed to support those who work. And Paul's saying that I didn't, I'm not preaching the gospel so I can boast. 
my boasting would be void if I take things from you because I don't want you to think that I'm preaching the gospel to get money from you. I don't want it to be someone saying, oh, well, he's just saying that so you can pay him. He's saying that I have nothing to gain from this other than it was laid upon me by God himself. He chose me to preach the gospel. It is not my will that I'm doing this. He says, for if I do this willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, I have been entrusted with the stewardship. It's his stewardship to preach the gospel. It's what he's been entrusted to, to do. What's his reward then? That he may present the gospel of Christ without charge and not abuse his authority in the gospel. He doesn't want anyone to say that he's abusing his authority. He doesn't want anybody to say you're just doing this for gain. He's doing it so he can have a reward in heaven because he's not doing it because he chose to do it. He was chosen to do it. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more. And to the Jews I became a Jew, that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as to under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without law, as without law, not being without law towards God, but under the law towards Christ, that I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker of it with you. I might share the blessings with you. He's saying, I have became all things to all men, so I might save some. And people take this scripture and they twist it so they can go out and sin and say, well, I'm trying to breach the sinners. You don't make yourself a sinner. You don't. He, and he, it's funny that he says he's a Jew, but I became a Jew because he says he's a Jew of Jews. But anyways, he's saying he can, he's doing this to relate to them where they're at. Not being arrogant and not boasting over the people. He's bringing himself under them to talk to them and to be around them so he can win them over to Christ, but not breaking the law and not being under the law of Moses, but under the law of Christ. And to the weak, he's became weak. It means those who are weak in the gospel, those who are still without real understanding of the gospel. He's became as like-minded as a child with them and feeding them the milk that they need. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty that I might fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into the subjection, bring it into subjection, least when I have preached to others, I myself might become disqualified. So, do you not know that everybody who runs in a race runs so they can receive a prize? And they do it for a perishable crown because the crowns back then were made of reeds. He's saying, do it so you can receive a gold crown in heaven, so you can receive a prize in heaven that doesn't ever fade away. He says... Everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things, exercises self-control. A, a person that's running in races and is an athlete, an athlete, he, bless you, he goes out and he makes sure that he's eating right, he's sleeping right, he's exercising right, so he can have self-control in all things so that when he runs, he's ready to run the race. Do the same thing with your spirit and your soul and your body and your mind and keep yourself focused on the things of the Lord. Keep yourself in self-control and everything so that you may win a prize at the end and run the race to obtain the prize. Because not everyone who runs the race is going to get a prize. Some are going to come out with just their life in eternity. Just like it says in chapter 3. 
is going back in 1 Corinthians to chapter 3 to verse, I'm going to start at, I think, 4, no, no, 12. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone work, if anyone's work, which he has built on, endures, he will receive a, a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved yet as through fire, like a house fire coming out with just your life. He's saying, you can run a race and not get a prize. You can be in this race towards heaven and come, go into heaven and not have a reward. Or you can run in the race and try to obtain the prize, try to get a reward. Do all the things that you're supposed to be doing. And he's saying, I'm doing these things. I'm disciplining my body and bring and bring it into subjection, least I, when I have preached to others, I might become disqualified. He's keeping himself with the things of the Lord. He's keeping himself under subjection to Christ, submitted to Christ, so he can preach the gospel to others without any hindrance. And he's even, with with Barnabas, He's saying that they were, they were tent makers and they were working with their hands so they didn't have to take anything from anybody. They worked day and night, worked at night and worked in the day, making tents and preaching the gospel. So he's not doing it for earthly things. He's doing it for the heavenly things. He doesn't want to become disqualified whenever it's the end. He wants to have that prize at the end. Okay, I hope that made sense. I don't know if it did, but that's chapter 9, and I hope you guys are having a good day. Thanks. Bye.